Hey what's up guys, OSG here with a C64 software house video that has taken a little longer than usual. Micropros was a software house that was renowned for churning out great strategy and simulation games, and as with most games in this genre, they aren't simply fire up and play games. Oh no, they need some research, especially their flight sims, as they had manuals as thick as a bible. I've included games from MicroStyle and MicroPlayer which were companies that Micropros owned too. Anyway, I've trawled through all the games and I've come up with what I would say are the 20 best games from Micropros. So without more delay, let's take a look at the 20 best Commodore 64 Micropros games in order of greatness. Kicking us off in 20th place we have Xenophobe. This game just made it in because really it's a game that you either get or you don't. It's a pretty linear platform shoot em up with great graphics and absolute bang soundtrack that for me was slightly let down by the gameplay. In 19th place we have Rainbow Warrior. I can remember when this game came out and the hype that surrounded it with it being dubbed the first environment friendly software. It's a game all about the environment and I really liked it. I mean this bit here is no Echo of a Dolphin but it's pretty good for a little 8 bit. Crusade in Europe is in 18th position. As we move through this list there's going to be one name that we hear quite a lot and that's Sid Myers. He was a master of a great strategy game and in Crusade in Europe he joined forces with Ed Bever and made a pretty decent one, although not as good as his first outing in the war strategy genre which we will see next. Seventeenth place is taken by NATO Commander. There are actually four games in the series and they are all very similar, but different enough and entertaining enough to be able to grab their place individually. This was the first in the series and the one that Sid Meier's worked on alone. If you like strategy games then I suggest you work through them in order and make your own decision on which is best, but really they are all good. In 16th place we have Conflict in Vietnam. This was the last in the series and it's on par with the others too. Again it's Sid and Ed and they delivered a great strategy game. There are loads of resources online to learn how to play these games but as I said in the intro you need to invest time and actually like the genre to appreciate how good they are. F-15 Strike Eagle is in 15th position, our first combat sim on the list and it's another one from Sid Meier's. Look, I'm not going to insult people's intelligence and say this is like flying a real fighter plane, because it's probably not, but for an 8-bit micro it was a really good flight sim and it's the first taste that many people had of combat flight sims that actually hit the mark. Fourteen place is taken by Vic Dangerous 2. Developed by Core Design and probably is better known on the Amiga and ST, this was a super smooth 8-bit version of the game that had us pulling our hair out. Yes, even I had hair back then. This sequel took everything that we loved from the first game and I'd say slightly improved it. Love it or hate it, there's no denying that this was a great game on the C64. <laughs> In 
In third in place we have Solo Flight 2nd Edition. This is a great third person flying game. This version was later released as a budget game which makes it even better. Again it's one that takes some getting into, although nowhere near as hard as F-15, but maybe that's because you're not fighting planes, just delivering post. Decision in the Desert is in 12th position, the last of the Sid Meier's Ed Bever series on the list, and in my opinion, the best. But as I said before, they are all good, and all very similar, so maybe it won't be your favourite, but if you like these games, you will definitely love this. Eleventh place is taken by Floyd of the Jungle, another game that I featured in my Hidden Gems video, in fact I put this second on the F list. It's a super basic looking game that has a super basic concept, get to the top first, but it's really in two player that this game shines, and I'm sure that once you play it you'll be laughing like mad. In 10th place we have Destroyer Escort, moving away from land and air to our first naval sim on the list. The fact that this is in 10th place just shows what a quality lineup we're in for, as this is not just a good navy simulator, it's a great one, with proper good graphics and immersive gameplay. Kennedy Approach is in 9th position. We have seen a few flight simulators so far, but in Kennedy Approach we have a behind the scenes job as an air traffic controller. Sounds dull right? Well, that's where you are wrong. This game is brilliant, and whilst not being the best to look at, the gameplay is quality, especially when you get loads of planes in your airspace. Zero, zero, zero. Descend to 4,000 feet. Roger. American 801. Turn left. Eighth place is taken by Micro Pro Soccer, undeniably one of the best, if not the best, 8-bit micro football game ever made. I put this top out of all the C64 football games on the video I did a while back. It was my go-to football game before Sensible Soccer came out, and even now I fire it up and think how good was this for the C64. In 7th place we have Red Storm Rising. This is the second submarine game from Sid Meier's. We will see the first one in a bit. Whilst he never outdid his first attempt, this was and still is one of the best marine simulators ever. It's a genre that I never got into when I was a kid and probably is a good thing as on tape this was a nightmare load, but through emulation it's fine and I love it now. Project Stealth Fighter was in 6th position. This is probably the best combat flight sim on the C64, and for 1987 it was astoundingly good. I will say though that the manual is 124 pages, which makes it not one for casual gamers, although a lot of the manual is pictures and military bump. The learning curve is pretty steep, but once mastered there is no better. Fifth 
fifth place is taken by Silent Service, another marine simulation game here, and for me the best of them all. I know that some people will prefer Red Storm Rising over this, but for me this was just a little bit easier to get into instructions wise, and it was the first marine game from Sid Meier's too. We still play great today, and I defy any lovers of the genre not to enjoy this. In fourth place we have Gunship, this is by far the best helicopter game on the C64. Yeah, it's not of the same standard as Project Stealth in actual simulation quality, but for entertainment quality it's excellent. And who can forget that iconic intro screen, it's etched in my brain still to this day and brings the memories flooding back. Airborne Ranger is in third position, another top C64 game here, and it's one that has multi-genres. It's also the first game that I played that you didn't just go in all guns blazing, as in this one you had to sneak about and take enemies out. I also love that you could drop supplies etc around the areas before deploying, so that you could pick them up on the way. This became a quite tactical thought out thing though as you got into the game. Second place is taken by Stunt Car Racer, out of all the games on this list this is the one I played the most, still even today this game plays great and the car's physics are perfect. Someone in the comments on another video made a comment that this game was unplayable on the C64, well I don't know what game he was playing as this is a near perfect game for a 8-bit and as entertaining as the Amiga and ST version with cut down graphics. And now, in first place we have Pirates. This is a game that Sid Meier's is most known for, and there's a good reason, it's absolutely brilliant. The C64 version is the original and still the best version of this game. We scored only sub 68% in Zap, Commodore Format and Commodore Force, which is an absolute insult to how good this game is, and was obviously played by complete fools who couldn't be bothered to actually get their teeth into the game. Luckily though, most of the other mags scored at 90+, plus, as it's a complete masterpiece of a game. Ok that's it for this video, like I say it's taken a little longer to make this with all the simulators, but it's been worth it. Please let me know in the comments below what your favourite microprose games are, and if you haven't already please drop this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more great retro content. Oh, and if you would like to support the channel like these gems going up the screen right now, get on over to my Patreon channel where you can pledge for as little as $1 that will get your name in the end credits, video requests and more in the future. Till next time, this is OSG, signing out.